Be blessed as you watch the ministration of God's servant, Pastor Moraki, your only motive. Father, we give you all the glory this afternoon. We return every praise, every glory, every honor to our God. Thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We just sanctify your presence in our midst even this afternoon. And we ask that you have your right of way. Do that which only you can do. Pour upon us the spirit of truth and the spirit of revelation. Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. We give you praise, Father. Grant that everyone online and on site will be edified, strengthened and impacted by the power of your word. We give you praise because you will do much more. And we'll be very careful to return to you all the glory. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. If you love the Lord, would you say a big amen? Ah, come on, impact. Would you say stronger amen? Hallelujah. We give Jesus praise. You may have your seat. Let me see you. Uh-huh. Let me see you clearly. very good hallelujah welcome in jesus name everyone and thanks for joining our service we trust the lord that you will be blessed strengthened and impacted in jesus name i talk with you to proverbs chapter number 13 and i read the verse verse 20 uh, for a topic this uh, uh session you can call it the power of relationship the power of relationship proverbs chapter number 13 and i'll be reading from verse number 20. the bible says he that walks with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed proverbs 13 and verse 20 to zero proverbs 13 and verse 20 to zero i'll read it again he said, let's read it together. It's on the screen. Let's read it one to go. It says, he who walks with wise men will be wise. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. I want to share very briefly with you on the power of relationship. Now, one of the things that you and I, we need to understand is that you cannot succeed alone. You need relationships in our success something is integral something is germane something is strategic and that is relationship and when i'm talking about relationship i'm not just talking about you going out with a guy or a guy going out with you that's not just what i'm talking about that's far broader weightier and more important than that but of course that's that also subsumes or the topic subsumes those type of relationships as well but I want to talk generally about how you work with people. One of the things that will make you to succeed in life is learning how to walk and walk with people. One of the uh, marks of successful leaders, successful CEOs, successful managers, and those who have succeeded at any endeavor, it's that they are people with wisdom for relationships. So today, I'll be making some statements that will help you to uh, think about your relationship, that will make you to also think about the way you relate with people, that will position you to be a better team player. One of the, uh, one of the marks of uh, successful people in business and, so, and people who are rising at their job is that they learn how to work with other people. You must learn how to be a good team player, not to be a lone ranger. Often at times, I've had people say, people just don't like me. People who say, say things like, they don't like me. Yeah, this person don't like me. That person doesn't like me. And stuff like that. Now, yeah, actually, maybe you need to become a likable person. Maybe you need to improve on your relationship such that you become somebody that can love and can be loved. If somebody gets you a person across to you. Every relationship that, that you, in your life affects your future. That's the number one point. 
every relationship in your life affects your future. There is no relationship in your life that is neutral. There is nobody in your life presently that is playing a neutral, you know, role. That everybody in your life is doing something. All, every relationship in your life affects your future. And that is why you have to be strategic. That is why you have to be intentional. That is why you have to be very deliberate about your relationship. The first point you must know is that every relationship affects your life. There is no relationship that just comes into your life like, you know, a neutral agent. Every relationship affects your life. Number two, the second point that you need to know is that your future is determined largely by the people you permit in your life. Your future is determined by the people you permit in your life. The outcome of your life can be described by the people you presently permit in your life. Who are those people in your life? Who are the people in your life presently? Now, you can know where you are headed. You can know uh, your future outcome. You can determine how your future will end just by uh, looking at the people that are presently in your life. Number three, the third thing you need to know is that... Uh, uh, some people in your life will grow your strengths. And some people in your life will grow your weaknesses. The people in your life are either growing your strengths or they are growing your weaknesses. Everybody in your life is growing something. Somebody is either growing flowers in your life or somebody is either growing wheat in your life. Your life is a ground. And the people in your life are growing something. Somebody is either growing your strengths or is also growing your weaknesses. Some people in your life are helping you to develop strengths. They help you to develop focus. They help you to become better people. They are positive influences in your life. Some people come into your life and, you know, they kind of engineer your focus. They strengthen your resolve. They, they, they help you to grow. They help you to become better people. And some people are in your life and all they are doing is that they are actually feeding your weaknesses. Somebody say, you know, uh, I, I make good decisions where I'm around some people and I make bad decisions when I'm around some people. Is that correct? Is that your reality? When you're around some people, it's easier for you to, you know, live, uh, to live a godly life. When you're around some people, it's easier for your hunger for spiritual things to be developed. When you are around, for some, around some people, you are challenged. And you see, you cannot change until you are challenged. When you see some people, they pose a challenge to you and they allow you, they help you to grow. Matter of fact, those who are relationship experts, leadership experts, and those who are into management sciences, they have said that your life will become uh, the same except you change the people you relate with and the books that you read. If somebody gets you a passing across to us, are you in church this afternoon? If you are in church this afternoon, or you are online, say amen. <laughs> Let me hear you say, I'm here and I'm listening. Hallelujah. So people in your life are playing roles. Some people are playing the role of feeding your strengths. While some other people are actually feeding your weaknesses. And if there is something that you and I must do, is that we must permit those who will feed our lives. I'm talking again on the power of relationship. Why relationship is important and the type of relationship that you and I we need to develop as men and women of destiny. Where we read Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20 says that he that walks with wise men shall be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walks with wise men shall be wise. So there is an impartation of wisdom from the company that you keep. That is a type of, uh, you know, strength that comes into your life by keeping the right type of company. 
And if you don't change your companionship, or if you are working with a negative or wrong companionship, the Bible says that the companions or, or the company of fools are destroyed. I pray for you in the name of the Elohim of Israel. You shall not be destroyed. Oh, I say your future shall not be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your destiny will not be annihilated. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord God will preserve you. And that which he has kept inside of you. And that which he has chosen you for. By the grace of God it shall manifest. Oh come on I say it shall manifest. Your future is, is shining bright. And by the mercy of God you will get there. You will not be corrupted. You will not be polluted. You will not be dissected. You will not be divided. You shall be strong and you shall be whole in the name of Jesus Christ. So people in your life, number three, are either, we said number one, you cannot succeed alone. And I, I, I mean, I mean that's, what, that's the premise on which this sermon is built. You cannot succeed alone. Messi, Leo Messi is, uh, is perhaps my football hide up. He's my soccer hide up. But you see, that guy cannot succeed alone. As talented as he is, he cannot face another team all by himself. He needs to work in a team. He needs to function in a group. And that is the way we have been packaged. God packaged relationship into life. Not all of us are gifted. And perhaps some of us are more gifted than other people. But as gifted as you may be, you cannot succeed alone. You need interconnectedness. You need relationship. All of us are created to be interdependent on one another and to be ultimately dependent on God. So you need relationship to succeed. And I said number the first point is that every relationship affects your future. Every relationship affects your future. There is no relationship that is not doing something about your future. I said number two. That your future is determined by the people you permit in your life. You have a role to play. You have a responsibility. You are either allowing people in your life or you are, you know, you are either allowing wrong people in your life or allowing right people in your life. The third thing I said is that some, the people in your life are either growing your strength or growing your weakness. And I want you to ask yourself, who are the people? Just write this down. Who are the people that are growing my strength? Ask yourself that question. Who are the people that are growing my strength? And ask yourself the question, who are the people that are feeding my weaknesses? All of us, we have strengths and we have weaknesses. We have strengths. There are things in your life that are potent and strong, but for those things to be enhanced, you need to have the right company. You need to have the right relationship. And all of us also have weaknesses. There is none of us that doesn't have a weakness. But that weakness can either be fed or reduced or killed or destroyed by the company that you keep. You know, maybe you find it easy to gossip when you are around some people. You find it easy to talk the way you would not normally talk when you are around some people. I have a friend. His name is uh, Pastor Desmond Oladimeji. Oh, one thing is this. Anytime I'm around my friend, that's the time I laugh the most. Because he has a type of laughter that affects your laughter. When, when he's laughing, you just have to laugh. Where he's the type of guy that so much rejoices that when he's excited, he will laugh so much that you will just begin to laugh. He has one joyous anointing anytime you are around him. If somebody gets you a person across. And you have some people who, when you are around them, you are just sad. Why? Because they themselves are a package of, of sadness. So when you get around them, even if you're happy before, you just become sad. Why? Because every relationship has a way of affecting. Your relationship affects your environment. And if you are going to change your environment, you will have to change your relationship. The fourth thing that you will need to know is that every relationship is a current that is sweeping you, that is either sweeping you towards God's purpose for your life or sweeping you away from God's purpose for your life. Every relationship is either moving you in the direction of God's purpose for your life or moving you away 
from God's purpose from your life. And that my, that my, that my quest, my desire, my prayer, and my burden for this relationship, I mean for this uh, relationship teaching, is that you will be that type of person that moves people closer to their purpose in life. You will not be a person that moves people away from their purpose in life. I remember when I was in high school, high school, that somebody was my junior. And for some reasons, again, you know, we met again in the university. And when we met in the university, he didn't have, a, a, I mean, his own dormitory or so had not been apportioned. He didn't have an accommodation. So I asked him, I said, come and stay with me. Come and stay. Don't worry. I, have, I can ask you. Come and stay with me. Then somebody told him, said, ah, you want to go and stay with uh, Murak? He said, I promise you within three months, you will start speaking in tongues. He said, that one, I, I, he said, I can guarantee you that if you live in that guy's house, within three months, you will start speaking in tongues. And he said, well, yeah, he only offered me accommodation. I'm just going to stay in, in, in his house. He can do his tongues, he can do his things, but I'll maintain my lane. And by the mercy of God, within with less than three months, he became born again. And he, be, he began to speak in tongues. And he's still speaking in tongues to today. Now, 24 years has gone, and he's still speaking in tongues. 20 years has gone, he's still speaking in tongues. Why? Because every relationship moves you either towards your purpose or moves you away from your purpose. The guy is, is, is alive and well. His name is Pastor Tude Oguride. He, said, he, be, he became funny. He said, if you stay with that guy, we did, you will start speaking in tongues. And those are the days where you look at those who speak in the tongue, who are speaking in tongues as though they are mad people. And when this guy came, I said, no problem. You know, you can have that posture. You, that's your bed. You know, no problem. And every time I, you know, I'll be praying for I didn't ask him to become born again. I didn't even preach to him. I was just living my life. And one day he looked at me and I said, ah, I've known you with this life since you were in high school. He said, you are still living like this. He said, please, truly, I need that Jesus in your life. And I said, well, Tunde, I've been praying for you. And this is a good day. You can become born again right now. And I held his hand, led him to Christ by the mercy of God, and laid, laid hands on him to receive the Holy Ghost. And he began to pray in tongues. Today, he's a pastor. And by the mercy of God, he's still praying in tongues. What am I saying, people of God? You must be an enabler. You must become the type of believer that is strong and potent enough that can influence people to move them in the direction of their purpose and assignment in life. If you hear me say good amen to that. Number, what are we now? Number five, every relationship we either advance or abort your life assignment. Every relationship we either abort or advance your life assignment. Everybody you permit into your life have the capacity of doing two things. Some can either advance your purpose and some can abort your purpose. Now, don't stay in relationships that, that kill destiny. Don't stay in places where your strength is whittled down. Don't stay in relationships that we abort your assignment. Every relationship has the capacity of either advancing your assignment or aborting your assignment. Number, 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 what are we now? Number six, some relationships can damage you irreparably. Some relationships can damage you irreparably. They can so much damage you that you don't recover. Yes. And that's why it takes a lot of responsibility and spiritual sensitivity to allow people into your life. There are some people that you come in, you, you stay with them and you become damaged irreparably. They do something to your psyche. They do something to your conscience. They do something to your, to your, to your, to your self-esteem. They do something, if you stay with somebody who is always abusing you and cursing at you, and harassing you. A time comes that you don't feel good about yourself. You have had it so much that it has registered a dent in your conscience or in your subconscious. 
If somebody gets one passing across to us, a relationship can damage you irreparably. Number, number seven, some relationships can multiply your wisdom. Some relationships in your life can multiply your wisdom. And that's what you must do. You must permit only relationships that multiply your wisdom. If I talk about my friends today, most of them are pastors. I talk about Tayo Adare, he's a pastor. Okay? I talk about Monday Paku, he's a pastor. Now, I talk about Obina, he's a pastor. All of these guys, we began to relate at a time when we were very young. Some of them we began to relate as far back as 1996, 1998, 1995. Okay? And we began to relate in Christian cycle. Some of our relationships are based on tongues. I'm telling you. Somebody in those days will say, you see, I just prayed for five hours. I say, ah, you prayed for five hours? Really? I'm going to invalidate you. And you go inside too and find your own time. And you come out and say, you know what? I just did seven hours. Those were the type of competition we were doing. It was not a competition for who has the, line, the best jacket. It was not a competition for who has the best suit. Because actually we didn't have suit. What we had in those days were coats. Coats of, some of them were many color. Some of them we don't know whether we paid the tailor or the tailor paid us. Because sometimes when I look at some of our pictures, I find that, ah, how was I so abused and harassed like this? And I thought it was fashion. You know why you wear your suit and your suit is like this? And with that, we were doing man of God. You know, he said, we now invite the man of God and the suit is like a bada. And so when we were going to preach, you say, you know, ah, borrow me that your jacket, Jerry. You know, I'll take it, you know, you take another person's shoe. But we, <laughs> ah, so you stuff the inside with all manner of material so that you can stay very well. Ah, so our competition, our, our friendship was not based on material things or foolishness. It was based on the burden of God on our heart and on the calling that we have received. If somebody gets him a passing across to you, let us develop relationships that will multiply our capacity. Number what now? Number, number what? Number, I should be number eight right now. Now, those who, who despise God, huh, we despise you. Those who despise the things of the spirit, they will despise you. If you are in a relationship with somebody who doesn't have respect for God, I tell you that person will not have respect for you. And that's why the Bible tells us not to, uh, not to be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You can't be the best friend of somebody who makes jest at pastors. If somebody gets you passing across, you can't be the best friend of that person. Your friends must be able to know your true appetite. And they must be able to respect it. You must not hide your Christianity so that you can be acceptable socially. No, that's not who you are. You are not called to blend in. You are called to stand out. You are called to be the standard anywhere you find yourself. And you know, you can't have, you, you can't have somebody who doesn't have any type of value for spiritual things. Yes, you can witness to them. You can love on them. And you should love them. But you should not permit them to be a regulator of your life. Uh, I like Bishop Oedepo. He says something like, friendship is by choice. It's not by force. It's by choice. You permitted it. That's why they're in your life. If somebody is always castigating pastors, castigating spiritual things, huh? rubbishing men of God, rubbishing the things of God, that person can't be your closest ally. Why? Because those who despise God and those who fight God will fight you. Now, as you begin to grow, as you think about your life and think about your future, there are at least uh, uh, five strategic relationships that you need. The first relationship you need are mentors. Every one of us, we must have a mentor. Your chance of succeeding, you know, increases when you have the right mentor. 
Every one of us, we all need mentors. Mentors are those who have done what you are trying to do and they have gone past what you are trying to go past. I looked at a young man one time and you know he was talking and all of those things. And I said, listen. Huh? <laughs> at that time I told you, I said, look, I was also a high schooler. I was a high schooler over 22 years at that time. I said, I was a high schooler. He looked at me and said, really? He said, how old are you? I said, at, at least, if I'm not older than you, at, I'm at least 18 years older than you. So he now sat down. So, so when I said, when I speak, then you know I know what I'm talking about. So listen. Mentors are those who have done what you are trying to do. And most of the time, the problem with young people is that they assume that they know it all. And they assume that when mentors are speaking, it's not as important. They assume that we can, they can figure it out. Sometimes when you are preaching, actually what you are doing is not just that you are doling out information. You are actually passing out a piece of your life. When you read a book, when you lay hold on a book and you read through a book, Actually, you are reading the life of somebody. You are reading the discoveries of others. You are reading, you know, the strength of others. And you are leveraging on that to advance your own journey. Every one of us, you need mentors. You need mentors in your career. You need mentors in your spiritual life. You need mentors. If somebody gets you a passing across, you need mentors. Those who can tell you to shut up. And you will not negotiate. Those who can tell you to keep quiet. And you will not say a word. Those who can tell you to sit down. You see. You are not important to your mentor's success. But your mentor is important to your own success. You are not important to his success. He's already succeeded. But he is important to your success in life. Every one of us, we need to choose mentors. Number two, the second kind of relationship you will need is that you will need friends. You will need friends. You will need friends. Now, the difference between your friend and your mentor is that your friend is looking for your comfort, but your mentor is looking for your correctness. Your friend looks for your comfort. He wants you to be fine. He, he cares about your emotion. He cares about how you feel. But your mentor cares about your correctness. He cares about the delivery of your assignment. He cares about you fulfilling your purpose. So it may be rough. He can be friendly, yes. But sometimes, he may demand from you what you ordinarily not want to give. If somebody gets one passing across, how many of you here, you have mentors? Let me see your hand raised up. Uh, if you don't have one, please go and get one. Okay? And you have to be deliberate. I have different type of mentors. For example, our father in the Lord, Pastor Bayo, he's my mentor. I have some other mentors that I read their books. Some of them, I've not met them. Some of them, they don't even know me. But I've been reading their books. Oh. Oh. Some of them, I've been reading them. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Kenneth Egi is a major mentor in my life. Huh? That if, that, there was no book that Egi wrote before he died that I didn't read. Maybe the one he wrote uh, in the grave. But anything again, I read it from cover to cover. Again, <laughs> uh, Copeland, these are mentors. John Maxwell is a mentor for me when it comes to leadership. If somebody gets me passing across, my late father in the Lord was not just uh, a mentor, he was, a, he was my father in the faith. Every one of us, we succeed by having positive mentoring voices over our life. And apart from mentors, you also need friends. You need people that you can journey together. 
You need people that you can walk together. You need people that you can travel the same direction. One thing about true friendship is that there is vulnerability. Your friend is somebody you can be vulnerable with. Your friend is somebody you can open up to. Your friend is somebody, listen, 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 come out of your Bibles, come to the altar. Your friend is not somebody you are trying to impress. That's not a true friend. If you're always trying to impress the person, maybe something has gone wrong in the dynamics of your relationship. A friend is not somebody you try to impress. A friend is somebody that you can open to, that you can be open to. And a friend is somebody that you can tell your weaknesses. And it will not take advantage of you. That's a true friend. I have a man of friends. Among a lot of them are in the ministry. Tokwe Fashaki is a pastor. Tayo Adare is a pastor. I can keep mentioning their names. And we don't try to impress each other. We are just honest. Your friend is somebody that you can sit down together at the table and just tell him, you say, ah, you see, the way I messed up. Eh? And we offer and say, let me pray with you. And we encourage you. And we chastise you where possible. That is a true friend. You need true friends in your life. The problem with a lot of young people is that at times, <laughs> the people we call friends, they're actually enemies. Let me move forward. You need destiny connectors. That's number three. The type of relationship you need in your life, you need destiny connectors. Your parents, for example, they are destiny connectors. Your teachers are what? Are destiny connectors. Oh, there is a destiny connector in my life that I won't forget it tomorrow. His name is Professor Dotun Ogundeji. That man was a destiny. A destiny connector is somebody that helps you to exit a season and move into a new season of your life. And every time God is getting ready to move you to a new season in your life, he sends destiny connectors into your life. That man was my teacher in the university. He was my teacher. He didn't teach me so much directly, but he was my HOD. He was the head of the department. He was the chair of the department when I was at the University of Ibadan. And he was a man that opened up a season to my life. I'm praying for you, all of you, that God will send you destiny connectors. Uh, that amen is weak. I say, God, we send you destiny connectors in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we send you people that will advance your journey. God, we send you people that will strengthen your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Teachers are destiny connectors. I'm a teacher myself, or I've been a teacher myself. There are some of my students that, because I wrote for them, uh, what do you call it? Letter of recommendation. Some of them got very serious scholarships. I remember one that I wrote a, 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 a letter of recommendation for. And she got a scholarship with, uh, 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 with the government of Germany. A lot of my students are, are, they are in graduate school. I wrote their re references. I wrote their recommendation. And some of them too today, they have uh, their PhD. Some of them are doing fine. Okay? One of them actually got back with me. I, I remember teaching her in second year at New York University. She was a, she was a sophomore at you know, New York University then. And now she's a big lady, you know, and she's a professor at Rutgers University. And she said, and she saw something that felt, you know, could benefit me. And she decided to write me a letter and say, uh, Professor, do you remember this so, 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 and so? Do you have this uh, time for this type of uh, engagement? And it was going to be a, a contract with the government. Destiny connectors. Relationship, you must not treat relationships as, as anything. Every relationship in your life is capable of advancing you. Sometimes destiny connectors are, are your pastor. Our pastor here is, my de is a destiny connector for me. If somebody gets you one passing across, sometimes it might be your boss. The, my boss is my destiny connector. Sometimes it might even be a neutral person. 
but it's a destiny connector for you. Why? Because it helps you to exit a season in your life to move into another season. I want to pray for all of you in the name of Jesus that in this season, God will send you destiny connectors. I say God will send you destiny connectors in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes destiny connectors might be people just introduce you to somebody. I can count by the mercy of God one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least ten people that are married. Because, you know, they just pass through me. Somebody says, ah, have you met this person? One of them I asked, that one person said, ah, she, she, she works with a company that sells shares. You know, they were selling shares and all manner of things. I'm uh, working with the stock market. So, and I said, so, as I said well, to one of my sons, I said, come. This person sells uh, shares. She can help you buy all the shares in the world. Okay? Today they are married. And they've been married now for over 12 years. I asked him to just buy shares. So, but she bought the lion share. <laughs> That's destiny connection. If somebody gets you, I'm passing across to you. Some of you need destiny connection. And I'm trusting God that God will send it to you. And of course... The last relationship is also protégés. You need protégés. Who are protégés? They are people that you are maturing, that you are developing. People that you are deliberately influencing. And please, let me say to every one of us, you are not too young to be an influencer. And please, start your journey of mentoring others quite early. Start pouring into the life of others. Find a young man. Find a young lady. There is somebody that needs what you have. I'm telling you. Listen, there is somebody that will not listen to me, but that will listen to you. There is somebody that will not listen to Pastor Bayo, but that person will listen to you. Why? Because you can connect socially and mentally. Okay? At this time of your life, you need to begin to point to the life of others. If there is one thing that grace did for me very early, was that I began to mentor other people quite early. Today, by the mercy of God, by the mercy of God, I can count tens and as a matter of fact, hundreds of them. They are big men now. But at one point or the other, by the mercy of God, they passed through my hand. And I was their mentor. Find somebody to help. Find somebody to build. Find somebody to encourage. Find somebody to strengthen. Audit the relationships in your life. Sit down. Ask yourself some questions. Who are my destiny connectors? So destiny connectors, you hold them gratitude. Who are my mentors? To so mentors, you hold them obedience and respect. Who are my friends? To so friends, you hold them loyalty. And who are my enemies? Enemies, you hold them avoidance. Oh, yes. Say, I said it. And by now, I know what I'm saying. Is somebody getting what I'm passing across? To so mentors, you hold them what? Respect. To friends, you owe them what? Loyalty. To protégés, you owe them what? Love. To destiny connectors, you owe them, owe, owe them what? Gratitude. And to enemies, you owe them what? Thank you. Don't permit the wrong people in your life so that you don't have the wrong results. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you wisdom. May the Lord make you the right person. May the Lord give you the right influence. May the Lord give you grace to be able to influence other people as the salt of the earth and as the light of the world. May somebody rejoice because of your love. May somebody rejoice because of your leadership. May somebody rejoice because of your dedication. May somebody rejoice because of your sacrifices. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you, every unfriendly friend in your life, I relocate them. 
Every evil influences in your life, I cut them off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that this week, God will send to you destiny connections. People that will help you to ex exit your present season into a greater season. May the Lord send them to you quick in the name of Jesus Christ. May God send you people that will lift up your hand. May God multiply your capacity and multiply your wisdom. May positive relationship come into your life. All the people that are growing weaknesses in your life, I cut them off in the name of Jesus. And all the people that will grow your strength, I release them into your life. All the people that will grow your flowers, I release them into your life. Everyone who is growing weed in your life, I cut them off in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and shine like a light, bright star in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not a man, no. 
been blessed by this ministration we'd love to hear from you kindly connect with us on the following social media platforms on your screen